This is Rio of Madison Rising, and you're listening to our acoustic version of the Star Spangled Banner here on KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so bright? Stripes in bright stars through the perilous fight. Oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming in the rocket's rain. Listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at KLRNRadio.com. You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. God's Pure Word of Faith with Richard Harden can now be heard Monday through Friday mornings at 7 a.m. Central, 8 Eastern, and on Saturday and Sunday mornings at 6 a.m. Central, 7 Eastern. Join him and let's turn our country back to God. It only takes a spark to start a forest fire. Let's get on fire for the Lord. Right here on KLRN Radio and the Spark Radio Network. Visit Richard's website at raharden.com. That's the World Wide Web at R-A-H-A-R-D-I-N dot com. At his website, you can see a summary of the six books he has written, where purchases may be made. He also has a link to 18 videos on YouTube and several blogs about Christian beliefs. If you prefer, visit Amazon.com backslash Kindle and type in Richard Harden to see and purchase his books. Each of my programs are being saved so that you can listen to them at any time. There's just four simple steps to find the past programs. Go to www.spreaker.com. That's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. Enter my name, Richard Harden, in the search box in the top center of the home page. Click on the brown icon, which has the Bible, two candlesticks, and a cross in the background. A list of my programs will come up. You're listening to God's Pure Word of Faith with Richard Harden. Richard will guide you through the Bible and help you find God's purpose for your life. Now here's teacher and author Richard Harden.
Welcome to God's Pure Word of Faith. I'm Richard Harden, and again, I want to thank the Lord and the management of KLRN Radio for this great opportunity to share God's Word with you today. I have some good information for you in these trying times we're in. You know, uh, the scriptures talk about signs and wonders, good ones and bad ones that are going to be taking place in the end times. And also, we need to have some basis for how we evaluate these things personal signs in our own life and also signs you know there it says it'll be in the heavens and and things like this it says that uh, the evil men will come producing evil signs and wonders that it might even deceive the elect God's people and everything so uh, we need to get prepared for that I'm going to share with you first about my website I have a lot of videos 18 videos and 20 something messages on a blog and six books I'd like for you to go check out but uh, and then I'll get right back into this as soon as we get through with this introductory video on the website visit Richard's website at raharden.com that's the world wide web at r-a-h-a-r-d-i-n dot com at his website you can see a summary of the six books he has written where purchases may be made. He also has a link to 18 videos on YouTube and several blogs about Christian beliefs. If you prefer, visit Amazon.com backslash Kindle and type in Richard Harden to see and purchase his books. Now, yeah, welcome back. You know, probably one of the first things that when somebody gets started, you know, seeking the Lord and getting answers to prayer and uh, sharing with others about you know how the Lord's working in their lives and everything one of the first things you'll probably hear from Christians that you visit with or something is well, you better not seek signs you better watch out seeking signs you know something like this signs can get you in trouble and that's right some can some won't but see we got to be able to what do we do when we receive some type of special what we know is a uh, spiritual manifestation in our life or around us or something like this well to start out with uh, in Matthew chapter 12 verses 38 39 and also Mark let's see excuse me Matthew 16 1 through 4 and Luke chapter 11 verse 29 scribes and Pharisees came to Jesus now see the scribes and Pharisees their intention uh, was well, they were not really wanting to get closer to Jesus or anything or to God. They they were wanting to find something to criticize him for. And it says here, Matthew twelve thirty eight starting says, Certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. Or they were asking for a sign. Show us a sign. But Jesus answered and said unto them, An evil, adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given it but the sign of Jonas the prophet. Now, see, he says it's evil and adulterous generation. And so it says in Matthew 16, Luke 11, same thing. Now, so this is where people get the indication that, you know, seeking signs is bad. But it wasn't the signs here that made them an adulterous generation. They were the ones of evil. They wanted to, you know, Jesus to do something that they could criticize him for and everything, you know, that he was you know, not going according to the law and the proper procedure and all this. And was, he was doing it on the wrong day. Sometimes, you know, he healed people on the Sabbath and they criticized him for that, even though the person got healed. So uh, their hearts weren't right. And that's why Jesus replied and said, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. Now we've got to understand what is a sign? Learning to hear God's voice is very important. This uh, in John chapter ten, Jesus says, "Shepherd goeth before them, speaking of his sheep, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers." Now, when these evil men in the end time start uh, producing evil signs and wonders and everything, it says that may, maybe even the they're able to deceive even the elect, God's people. That's because we need to be prepared. We need to be prepared to whatever comes our way. We can turn to the Lord and hear his voice. Now, I heard a good uh, example of this, that how we need to learn to hear uh, God's voice, Jesus' voice, the Holy Spirit's voice. 
is like a, if, if you've got a real close friend, girlfriend, boyfriend, or maybe husband, wife, and like that, and you go to a, a big, huge party in this big ballroom, you know, like Christmas party or something, and y'all get separated, somebody could blindfold you and lead you by the hand throughout the party where people are talking and laughing and hollering and everything like this, and you still, among all that noise and everything, you still would be able to pick out your friend, your wife, or your husband's voice as you walk through there, see, you'd recognize their voice. With all those other people talking and laughing back and forth and everything, you could recognize your husband or wife's voice. And that's the way it's supposed to be with Jesus. As we're walking through this life, well, even today, as we go through today's life, and we hear people saying this and hear people saying that, we see radio and television broadcast, you know, and say different things and hear different things, we should be able to hear the Lord's voice as we go through today. Walk with Him. Talk with Him. Now, to do that, you're going to have to be studying the Scriptures and getting God's Word in you so that the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of Christ in you can remind you then throughout the daytime of different things. Is that person really speaking God's Word? Well, see, then the Spirit of Christ in your heart can come forth and remind you of what God's Word is. Submitting every thought to the obedience of Christ. See, so Christ will is in our hearts to help remind us of his word that we can hear him as we walk throughout this party today or you know our life today and hear all these other voices speaking now so we need to learn to hear God's voice and there's so many ways God speaks from his you know Holy Spirit or Christ in our hearts speaking to us he speaks to us, to us through the Bible and through preachers and teachers and and you gotta you know submit these things that you hear though from your ears and the things you see from your eyes submit them to Christ in you. That means you need to be filled with God's Word as much as you can. And that's a basis, a foundation in the living Word. You know, Christ in us, our hope of glory. Now, that is the foundation we need to be coming from. And not just, you know, deciding, well, this sounds good, this sounds good, you know, that doesn't, like this, depending on it, because we need the Lord to give us that instruction. Now, and then in all this time here that we're doing this, we need to also uh, understand that God is not a respecter of persons. He didn't just bless people of you know special callings, you know like Jeremiah and Isaiah and all these people just because He called them. He didn't bless them. That He blessed them because they have they had to perform their missions, whatever the mission was. Moses, Jeremiah, Isaiah, John the Baptist. They had to perform their missions like we do, or we have to perform ours like they did acceptance and obedience to God's word to faith that's why we need to be able to hear his voice so clearly so that we can make those choices to accept and obey his word today throughout today as we go through our day to day now um, he's not a respecter of person God respects acceptance and obedience to his word because he and his word are the same and as I mentioned so many times when when we say we hear from God or God's spoken to us it's God himself manifesting his spirit in our mind to create in our mind a pattern a thought or something like that that we can understand so when we reject him we're rejecting the living God when we reject his word in the Hebrews chapter 3 verses 12 through 19 says the children of Israel when they failed to enter in the promised land because they didn't trust that God would uh, take care of the giants and everything said that they were departing from the living God and that's the same way with us when we reject his word we're departing from the living God and rejecting to unbelief so it says so many times in the scriptures that God is no respect of persons he respects people that respect his word so he respects his word and we can get in on that respect when we accept and obey his word Romans 2 11 says there's no respect of persons with God Hebrews 6 12 uh, tells us to be not slothful, but follow them who th through faith and patience inherit the promises. But see, we got to have the uh, God's pure word for his promises and everything. James 2 9 says, Respect of persons is sin. If you're holding respect of persons, different races or different ways they look or something like this, that's sin. Because see, God loves everybody. God loves everybody. And, and Second Chronicles 19 says, Wherefore, let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Take heed, do it. There is no iniquity with the Lord our God, nor respect of persons, or taking gifts. You can't bribe God and, and 
give him a gift to let you do something, you know, like this. No, he doesn't take gifts. He's, he, you can't bribe him. And, um, and Peter says in Acts chapter 10 that God is no respecter of persons. Now, so we've got to realize that, that God will work in our lives like he worked in the people, the special, we call special, but the, the, the great people of the Old Testament that accepted and obeyed God's word. What, we can accept and obey God's word too and see what God will do in our lives. See, and, and that's, he, God's no respecter of persons. If we will accept it in, um, what is it, Psalms 138, verse 2, it says, God uh, exalted his word above all his names. Because again, he and his word are the same. So it's very important in this end that we seek the Lord to learn how to uh, hear his voice, and, and especially with all these signs and wonders that people are going to be uh, performing, these evil people in the end times, the closer we get to it and everything, to know. What's from God? What isn't from God? Only God can tell us. You know, you can't just sit and analyze one, and you know, in your own mind of the flesh. But you can if you've got the, the Spirit of Christ in your heart and His living words in your heart and everything. Uh, then He will give you that. Now, let's take a look at. You know, when you start uh, trying to find out what something means, uh, the best thing to do is try to find scriptures that will explain and give you a definition of the word, or if not a definition. Now, um, an example that you can figure out what the word means and everything. And that's the way it is in uh, 2 Kings chapter 20. 2 Kings chapter 20 is a little story. It's only We only need about 11 verses here, but uh, it tells a story about King Hezekiah and the prophet Isaiah. It doesn't say anything in here about uh, visible answers or the difference between signs and visible answers. But as we go through the story, you'll be able to see clearly what the difference is. And this is the best example I can find of in, in the Bible that has both of them in the same story in a way that we can do this. So starting in chapter 20 uh, of Second Kings, Scripture says, In those days Hezekiah, now King Hezekiah, was sickened to death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said, now, when the prophet speaks, now he's speaking, what he says is like, thus saith the Lord. So the prophet came to him and said, thus saith the Lord, set thy house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Well, that kind of shook Hezekiah up, I guess, a little bit. Maybe it would us too. But in verse 2, see what Hezekiah does? Then he turned his face to the wall prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech you, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with perfect heart. Now, in truth is with God's word, because God's word is truth. Uh, so he's walked before the Lord with truth, you know, obeying God's word, best he knows how. Even kind of a little bit, you know, here, maybe a little arrogantly, or something says, with a perfect heart. Uh, now, you know, he didn't have a perfect heart like we think of a perfect heart, but, but you know, he had set his heart to seek the Lord, and he tried and everything. He says, I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. Well, it didn't take long for God to hear and respond to that prayer. But how did he respond? Listen to this in verse 4. And it came to pass, before Isaiah was gone out of the middle court of the castle, or you know, where the king was living, the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again, tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears, behold, I'll heal thee, and on the third day thou shalt go up unto the Lord. Now that's what each of you should expect out there today when you turn to the Lord, that he'll hear you, he'll see your prayers, he'll hear your concerns, your problems, and he will respond to them. Now, so he goes back then to tell the king. And uh, God, well, continues there, you shall go up to the house of the Lord. And he, the next verse says, Now I will add unto thy days fifteen years, and I will deliver thee from this city and this city out of the hand of the king of Syria, and I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. So Isaiah says, Take a lump of figs. And they took it and laid it on the boil, and he recovered. Now, that could have just been the end of the story, because, you know, God backed him up, healed him, but now listen to what Hezekiah says in verse 8. And Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, What shall be a sign that the Lord will heal me, and that I shall go up to the house of the Lord the third day? See, he could have just waited to see, but he wanted uh, a sign from the Lord that 
God was speaking through the prophet Isaiah because a prophet supposed to you know if a prophet didn't tell the truth or if whatever the prophet said didn't happen they were supposed to be killed because that was a false prophecy and God wasn't backing him up in Proverbs 35 and 6 says every word of God is pure a shield him but to trust him add thou not to it lest he reprove thee and thou be found a liar and what it means by that is if you speak something say it's God's word and it doesn't happen then God's not backing you up and you're a liar it's not God's word and in the Old Testament the punishment for that was death so he starts out saying you're gonna die then he comes back and says you're gonna live God's gonna heal you give you 15 years see those kind of contradictory in the flesh you know if you look at them like that and try to analyze them you know so King Hezekiah knew though how to find out if it was God backing a person up he says what shine what, excuse me <laughs> What shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me, and that I will go up into the house of the Lord the third day? Now listen to what Isaiah, he, he must have really been, you know, trusting the Lord, you know, for anything to say this. He says to back to the king, This sign shall I have of the Lord, that the Lord will do the thing that he has spoken. Shall a shadow go forward 10 degrees or back 10 degrees? He's saying, God will move the earth and the sun in their orbits one way or another to prove to you and give you a sign, a visible sign that you can see the results of on the sundial that I'm telling the truth, that I'm speaking God's word, God's speaking through me. So Hezekiah answered, it's a light thing. Now, that's kind of something. It's a light thing for the shadow to go down 10 degrees. Because that's the way it's already going is what he's in a sense saying you know it's gonna be easier that way which it wouldn't have been easier but you know if God's gonna move it it wouldn't matter which way but he says it's a light thing for the shadow to go down 10 degrees nay let the shadow return backward 10 degrees okay that way I'll know for sure and you won't you know I won't be able to be tricked or something like this verse 11 and Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord now let's change that cried to Isaiah the prophet prayed unto the Lord. Now it says cried because he, his life was on the line and it probably was a prayer. It sounded like he was crying. But he prayed unto the Lord and God brought the shadow 10 degrees backward by which it had gone down on the dial of Ahaz. The prophet Isaiah prayed and got a visible answer to prayer. The shadow moved backwards 10 degrees. King Hezekiah didn't do anything except just sit, look, and listen he saw the shadow go back 10 degrees too. He got a sign because he didn't pray. He was just sitting watching what God was going to do. He heard the prayer and saw the answer. That was a sign to him that God was speaking through his prophet Isaiah. Now, see, that is the difference then between a sign and a visible answer. The prophet Isaiah got a visible answer because he prayed, cried out to the Lord. God answered him. King Hezekiah got a visible sign and they both saw the same thing but it was a visible sign to the king Hezekiah and a visible answer to prophet Isaiah now go back up and to the scribes and Pharisees they were coming to Jesus and uh, you know complaining and everything and then they started saying give us a sign and then he says back to them you know your adulterous generation would seek a sign said there shall no sign be given it but the sign of the prophet Jonah you see he didn't he wasn't speaking against the sign there because see he gives signs to people all the time to get their attention to to maybe stop us from going in the wrong direction sometimes like that in his mercy he'll stop us and the signs and things but see what it was here they didn't want to pray and seek they they could have been praying and seeking and getting visible answers but they wanted Jesus to pray or whatever to perform a sign and like that see so it wasn't the sign that was bad that they were asking for or something but it was their heart now and that's the way it is today there's going to be good signs and bad signs but we've got to be able to turn to the Lord to get this difference in everything now uh, God is not a respecter of persons so he will hear us and, and tell us to in different things for an example let's take uh, example Jesus gave us in John um, John 11 
when he came to uh, Martha and Mary's house, you know, uh, Lazarus had died, and he went to see them. When he got there, um, they had a visit back and forth and everything, and Martha and them told him, if you had been here, you know, he wouldn't have died and things like this. But then in uh, John chapter 11, verse 41, uh, well, verse 40, Jesus said to her, Says I not to thee that I, that thou wouldest believe thou should have, you know, thou should see the glory of God. I'm stumbling here. I'm trying to hurry here, but then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, "Now listen to this prayer." He prays out loud intentionally, because he wants these people to hear his prayer and see the answer. See, he wants to give them a sign. He, the scribes and Pharisees, he said, no, you're not going to get a sign. But here, these people that have gathered there uh, from all around that knew Martha and Mary, he wants to give them one. And listen to his prayer. Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they might believe that thou hast sent me. See? He did it so that these people could hear his prayer, see his answer, like Hezekiah heard Isaiah's prayer, saw his answer, and he knew God was speaking to him. Now, he's doing, Jesus doing the same thing here. When people say Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, no, he didn't. Jesus prayed, and the Spirit of Christ, the same Spirit that raised Christ, Jesus from the dead, is going to raise Lazarus from the dead. You know, the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of God. He said, that they might believe that thou sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. So he just called him to come out after God had raised him from the dead. And he that was dead came forth bound foot in grave clothes, and his face was bound of a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. Listen to verse 45. And many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen these things which Jesus did believed on him. Saying that was the purpose of the sign was that they might believe on him. Also, we hear about Elijah, a prophet of the Old Testament. So they said, boy, Elijah called down fire out of heaven and everything, and uh, he was such a great prophet and did all this. Uh, he was a great prophet and everything, but he didn't call down fire out of heaven. If you look in uh, 1 Kings 18.36, just like Jesus prayed and the Spirit of God raised Lazarus from dead, Elijah prayed, and the Spirit of God sent the fire down. Listen to Elijah's prayer in, uh, let's see, it's uh, chapter 18, verse 36. And it came to pass, at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that Elijah the prophet came near and said, this is his prayer, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and, now, listen to this, and that I have done all these things at thy word. See, God had told him ahead of time what to do. Elijah had accepted God's word to faith in his heart, and he was doing what God told him to do. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. God had spoken to Elijah. Elijah accepted in obedience and went and did what God told him to do. That's faith. We can have the same faith in our lives when God speaks to us. Accept his word to teach that class and start teaching it and trust that God will help you. Accept his word, you know, to lead that devotional and God will help you do it. See, you'll go doing it then, doing it in faith. Elijah here only did those things to torment or to tempt those 400 and something false prophets because God told him to. God told him about putting the fire there, I mean, putting the water there on the sacrifice and everything, put more water on it, put more water on it. And then he, you know, God had told him he was going to, you know, bring down the fire and take the sacrifice. But he, Elijah says that I have done all these things at thy word. Just like Jesus said, you know, uh, I know that you hear me always, but I do this so the people standing by might hear and believe. And that's what Elijah was doing. The, the people saw that God was the only one that could bring down that fire to heaven except the sacrifice, and the false prophets were killed, and uh, people were turned back to the Lord. So I'll be right back in just a minute. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign.
Visit Richard's website at raharden.com. That's the World Wide Web at R-A-H-A-R-D-I-N dot com. At his website, you can see a summary of the six books he has written, where purchases may be made. He also has a link to 18 videos on YouTube and several blogs about Christian beliefs. If you prefer, visit Amazon.com backslash Kindle and type in Richard Harden to see and purchase his books. Each of my programs are being saved so that you can listen to them at any time. There's just four simple steps to find the past programs. Go to www.spreaker.com. That's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. Enter my name, Richard Harden, in the search box in the top center of the home page. Click on the brown icon, which has the Bible, two candlesticks, and a cross in the background. A list of my programs will come up. God's Pure Word of Faith with Richard Harden can now be heard Monday through Friday mornings at 7 a.m. Central, 8 Eastern, and on Saturday and Sunday mornings at 6 a.m. Central, 7 Eastern. Join him and let's turn our country back to God. It only takes a spark to start a forest fire. Let's get on fire for the Lord, right here on KLRN Radio and the Spark Radio Network. Welcome back. We were just discussing how uh, Jesus willfully gave signs to people because he wanted them to hear his prayers and he wanted to see the, you know, the great wonders he was doing. In fact, it says in the scriptures that 14 times that everywhere Jesus went to teach and preach the gospel, it said throughout all the cities and villages of uh, Israel that he healed all the multitudes of their sicknesses and diseases. In uh, Matthew chapter 9, verse 36, the scripture says that uh, he went throughout all cities and villages preaching the gospel and healing all manner of sicknesses and diseases. And he did this, you know, so that people would would know that it was, you know, uh, God working through him. That, That must have been the healthiest country on earth then after he went through three years of this because it didn't... It says it 14 times, and we know that um, some of those are repeated, like the ones in Matthew. Uh, maybe a couple of them are repeated in, in Mark or one of the other Gospels. But there were a lot of times, you know, like that, when, when let's say, 5,000 people, and we're just talking about the men. So there might have been, you know, anywhere from 10 to 12,000, 15,000 people there. But it said he healed all manner of sicknesses and diseases. So he was doing so many things like this. And then he prayed like there uh, before the people in uh, John 11, 41, where it says, you know, he prayed out loud so that the people could hear and believe that God had sent him. And a few verses later in John eleven forty five, it says that many of them did believe on him. See, that, that was what he was doing. But now listen to some of these other verses about Jesus then. In uh, John chapter 20, starting verse 30, And it says, And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is a Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. See, that's the purpose of Jesus' signs throughout his ministry and everything like that. His life was a sign to us. You know, so it wasn't he was speaking against you and me getting visible signs, or I say visible now, you know, when when you hear God speak to you and you say, God spoke to me, um, that's not visible, but you know, it's, it's, well, something so real as if you saw it, but yet sometimes you can see visible things that happen and know that it was God doing it too, so a visible answer or an answer where he speaks to you in such a clear way you know it's him and he's spoken to me like that several times I was up early one morning uh, when I used to have to get up early to go to work about you know 5, 5.30 something like that and I'd go in sit down on the couch and I'd have a cup of coffee and, and read uh, some scripture well I went to sleep that morning and I was in the military at that time and you know they do not like you to be late in the military you can be a little early you shouldn't be late. Anyway, I was fixing to be late if I hadn't woken up. I would have just slept right through. 
he spoke to me called my name to wake me up and I tell you it was the most beautiful thing I've ever heard it was like you had thousands of stringed instruments and they would just go together to perform the you know the syllables in the name Richard it was just so beautiful you know I could never come anywhere close to pronouncing it like it did but it was just so amazing to me man that was a special day from there on I got to work on time but but to hear his voice in that way so clearly and everything it, it was just I don't know what you know an audible voice you'd call it or not but it was so clear in my mind and body it was just it just filled me all over anyway and and you know the people that God speaks to and everything it's not that he prefers people he prefers everybody but not one over the other spiritually now he's got to pick people for different jobs you know because we're like the body of Christ and you know like a, a thumb he can't get mad because he's not a toe or something like this and everything or whatever you know every part of our bodies are necessary you let one little old finger or one little old toenail or something like that start hurting and that'll make you miserable all day long see we need every part operating correctly like it's supposed to well see in the body of Christ we're supposed to be like that too he can't call all of us to the same job but the job he calls us to is so special in uh, 2 Timothy 1 9 it says he saved us and called us to a holy calling not according to our work see but according to his own purpose and grace created in Christ Jesus before the world began see he didn't wait till we got born and we got up in our teen years and and we were pretty good at this you know basketball or we were pretty good at reading or pretty good at something like his math or whatever and then decide what he wants us to do see it says he saved us and called us to holy calling not according to our works but according to his own purpose and grace created in Christ Jesus before the world began now so the greatest thing any of us can do is to seek his holy calling for our life first now as we start seeking his holy calling and learning to hear his voice not only will he help us with these signs and and things like this because he'll be giving us signs if, if we get headed off maybe in the wrong direction well he will do something to Yoda get our attention and stop us and it depends on how fast we're going <laughs> what he might have to do to stop us like even the Apostle Paul you know he was out to kill uh, prison Christians and everything because he thought he was doing God's will he was doing it in honest ignorant unbelief because he thought he was right and killing them and getting them out you know stomp out that cult and Jesus stopped him on the road and he said Paul no Saul was his name then for his name was changed to Paul but he said Saul why are you persecuting me and he answered and said who art thou Lord he said I'm Jesus of Nazareth whom thou persecutest and then right out of Paul's mouth he says Lord what would you have me do see <laughs> he he was in ignorant unbelief thinking he was serving the Lord by persecuting Christians now he wanted to serve the Lord and and be a Christian himself and then wrote most of the New Testament you know like that now so we need to then set ourselves to seek the Lord for his holy calling try to learn you know from filling ourselves with God's Word how to daily hear his voice as we go through our daytime so that we can submit ourselves like it says submitting every thought to the obedience of Christ learning to walk with him by faith the scripture says the just shall live by faith so as we're hearing his voice from our heart then throughout the daytime we're accepting that and responding to people according to God's Word uh, doing good to those that you know uh, needed or things we see that they need or blessing those that curse us you know instead of fighting back and arguing or pray for those that despitefully use you and things like this see we learn how to respond properly and let the Lord then work in their lives and if somebody asks you know you're talking with them they ask you to pray for them don't just say okay I'll pray for you and everything like that. say let's pray pray for them then because then see they can hear your prayer that you're praying for them that God will heal them that God will bless their loved one or whatever and then when y'all separate and the person then leaves you and he starts seeing God working in his life to either heal himself or heal the person y'all prayed for or whatever like this that'll God will bring it back to his memory see he confessed and now I'm performing the work and draw that person closer to the Lord also then in uh, John 20 
chapter 21, verse 25. John 21, 25. Uh, the last, well, 24 and 25, the last two verses of the book of John. It says, This is the disciple which testified of these things and wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written, every one, I suppose that not even the world could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. See, in healing all those people in those great multitudes, you know, 12 to 14 times like that, and all of his messages and healing other people, things like that, he said, you know, he, he doubted if the world could even hold all the books that could be written about Jesus and the testimonies and everything. So the testimonies like that are so important. Of, of what God has done for us to share with others as we go through our day what God did to us because you know what uh, Jesus will back up his pure word every word of God is pure shield and put her trust in add thou not to it lest he reprove thee and thou be found a liar now there is a testimony and it says in Isaiah 44 26 that God performs the counsel of his messengers or our testimony. See, our testimonies are so important to let the world know what God's doing for us. Even in the Old Testament, the Jews were supposed to have been sharing God's word like that. Um, in let's see, First Kings chapter eight, the dedication of the temple, there was you know a lot of promises in there that if famine came on the people, if uh, pestilence came on them, if if God was punishing them, or just whatever happened, you know, he said if you come before the temple, humble yourself and pray. Turn back to me, seek me, I'll hear and answer anything. That's what God was, you know, telling him, you know, any problem you got. But as he was making that dedication, he said, And also to the stranger from the farthest parts of the world, if any stranger come and humble themselves and before the temple and call out to me, I'll hear and answer their prayers too. See, the temple was open to everybody on earth. It wasn't just for the Jews. The Jews were supposed to be God's blessing to others on earth. God, their testimonies to them, like Psalm 67, where David said, uh, God be merciful, merciful to us and bless us and cause your face to shine upon us, that your way may be known on earth, your saving health among all the people. He said, let the people praise you, God. Let all the people praise you. Then shall the earth yield her increase. He's going to heal our land. Earth yield her increase. And God, even our God, will bless us. And all the ends of the earth shall fear him. And I hope know their love, his love and presence. But see, and that's we're supposed to be doing that today. Sharing the testimonies. In fact, in, uh, let's see. Right on down here. In Mark... Uh, 1617 the scripture says these signs shall follow them that believe signs now in my name they shall cast out devils and they shall speak with new tongues and it goes on then to tell the many other things that have happened you know about uh, let's see if I can flip over here and find that real quick it's the last verse of Mark so I'll flip the page from Luke 1617 and they shall take up serpents if they drink any deadly thing. It shall not hurt them. Now, that's not talking about going out there and drink poison in front of people to prove it. That's what the devil's trying to get Jesus to do, to jump off that temple and that the Lord would, you know, protect him and everything. No, you don't do things like that just to prove to people, you know, that you've done something like this. But if you accidentally drink something that's poisonous, he will protect you. And he said, if you take up a serpent, if you drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. See, we should be doing things like that and praying for people and, and like this, that when they hear our prayers and see our answers, you know, like that, they'll know it's from God. Uh, now, like Matthew 24, 24, though, it says, For there shall arise false Christs, false prophets, shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they would deceive the elect. See, We've got to be involved in this spiritual warfare. We are, whether we realize it or not. Now, you may be back in an R&R &R camp, something like that, just resting and relaxing, but there's going to be a battle. You're going to have to face it someday. And it looks to me like in our society that the way Christians are starting to get persecuted here in the United States, that you're going to have to face it sooner rather than later. 
because it just keeps coming almost every day. It's amazing. I can't believe the things I'm hearing when I hear the news nowadays about what's going on in Christians' lives around the country and everything. And uh, we're going to need to be able to hear his voice and walk with him and have that confidence that he will hear and answer our prayers as we go. Now, uh, let's see, there was another verse here. Yeah, okay, Luke 21, verse 11. Luke 21, verse 11, it says, And great earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famines, and pestilence, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. And all these great multitudes of tsunamis we've seen, these huge earthquakes, earthquakes around the world, and um, I know here in Oklahoma in the last four or five years, we've had more earthquakes in California. It's just earthquakes everywhere. And we didn't used to hardly ever have an earthquake here. But now we have them sometimes four and five a day. Um, but we need to learn how to live walking with the Lord, hearing his voice. Like the example I told you a while ago, you walk to a big party blindfolded and you can hear the voice of your husband or your wife or your boyfriend or your girlfriend. You can hear their voice with your eyes closed and recognize that it's them above all the other noise throughout our society and everything. We've got to do, learn to do that. And the way to do it is to fill yourself with God's Word. There's so many ways that God speaks to people. God gives them dreams and visions, like Cornelius when he was such a good man in Acts chapter 10. And a um, good man prayed always, but he didn't have Christ in his heart. God sent him a vision with an angel, and the angel said, Go send after Peter, and he'll come tell you what to do. So he was missing Jesus, the Spirit of Christ, in his heart. And um, he accepted that, what that angel said. He accepted the living word of God to faith. He sent after Peter. God had to give Peter three visions to get him to go talk to a Gentile. And so Peter then accepted God's three visions, went and talked to the Gentile, Cornelius, and Cornelius and his whole family and all of them received Christ in their heart. And Peter told the disciples coming back when they kind of jumped on him, said, what are you doing talking to Gentile and doing it? He said, well, it happened to them the same that it happened to us on the day of Pentecost. So when Cornelius and his family heard Jesus and got saved, that's what happened to the disciples on the day of Pentecost. Now, so, uh, you know, the stories go together and showing from one story to the other. You need to be reading God's Word, getting it in you. Because so many of God's people, well, not so many, if, if you're going to be serving the Lord and everything, you're going to get persecuted. The uh, uh, Well, Moses, so many times, remember the people stood against him, and in Numbers chapter 16, uh, they finally got to where they were going to stop Moses from doing God's will. See, uh, God let them kind of go until, you know, while they were just, you know, uh, irritating Moses and everything. But when they stood before him and was going to stop him, then Moses said, if I be the man of God, something like that, he prayed the prayer, if I be the man of God, then don't let them die an ordinary death, but let the earth open up and swallow them. And God did that. As soon as he finished praying, the earth opened up, and several hundred people, men and their families, had the families had to suffer because of the choices of the men. But they, they were swallowed up, and God removed then that blockage from in front of Moses. Now, he had let them go while they were just kind of going along complaining everything, but when they finally rebelled and was going to stop him. Okay, and the same thing in so many of the people's lives like it, you know, uh, God stepped in, and we have to be able to have the confidence in God and know that he's with us wherever we go. Listen to the continuing in verse 12 of Luke 21, 11 through 12. Many, it says in verse 11, great earthquakes, divers places. Uh, divers mean different places, okay? Famines, pestilence, and everything. Verse 12. But before all these, they shall lay hands on you, persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogue. Now, we're going to be, you know, there's already Christians that have been picked up and, you know, charged with things, you know, uh, lost their businesses, you know, and people having Bible studies and things at home. They've been, you know, charged fines by cities for, you know, for violating ordinances and everything, they say. Okay, but for all these, they shall lay their hands on you, persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, 
being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. You know, there are many liberals and people in the government today that say Christians are the problem with our society. If we could just get rid of the Christians. You know, it's actually turned to that. You know, hearing so many of them say about it. And they say that, you know, the terrorists are from the right-wing fanatics or something like this. And the right-wing fanatic, if you pick up your Bible day and read it, then you're in that category. What they say, right-wing fanatic, if you read the Bible and try to go by what the uh, Word of the Lord means. So you've got to get His Word in your heart so that you can walk with Him. If you're going to, you know, be held accountable like this, you need to have His Word, Spirit of Christ, because... What is it? First Corinthians, one twenty four says Christ. Now Christ is the living Word of God. Christ says the power of God, and the wisdom of God. See the wisdom of God because Christ, the living Word, is God's pure Word, wisdom. God's pure Word, Christ, the power of God, is the Creator of the universe. Christ is the spoken Word of God that created the universe. When God said, "Let there be light." And when he said, let there be anything else, Christ is the part of the Trinity that went forth. The living spoken word of God went forth and created whatever it is God wanted created. Now, uh, so we've got to, you know, study the scriptures and allow his word to come alive in us. Christ in us, our hope of glory. The same creating Christ that created the universe. But also, see, you say, well... I thought there was a Holy Spirit, or I thought it was this. Well, look in Hebrews 11:26. It says Moses esteemed the riches of Christ, Christ, God's living word to him, greater than all the wealth of Egypt. See, so there is the definition, or uh, whatever you'd want to call it, of who Christ is. Christ, the living word to Moses, was the same Christ that created the universe, the same Christ that comes into our heart. See. It's God the Father, Jesus, and the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit in us. Now, so we've, we've got to learn, you know, in looking through the scriptures like this, how Christ is working in us and, and how he wants to. That's why when we speak his pure word, God will back it up because it's not our words, it's Christ. Every word of God is pure. Shield them, put their trust in him. Add thou not to it, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. When we speak God's pure word, God doesn't care who it is that speaks his word. He'll back up his word. He, he, his word went through that donkey to Balaam one time. And God backed up his pure word through that donkey to Balaam. See, he'll back up his pure word to me, to you. And like this, that we speak if it's his pure word. But if you say something to God's pure word, you need to know for sure that it is. And that's like Mark 11, 23, where it says, uh, Have faith in God, for whosoever shall say in this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast in sea, and not doubting. See, you've got to know that's God's pure word there, that you're going to speak. Speaking of the mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast in sea, and not doubting. See, you've got to have prayed on your knees about your problem, and you've got to hear God's word to you what it is he wants you to speak. Okay. Mark eleven twenty three. Have faith in God. Whosoever shall say in this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast in the sea, and not doubting, but believing. See, you've got to believe and know that it's God's word so that you have no doubt. And the only way you can get that is from God. But believing shall have whatsoever he saith. See, you've got to talk to the Lord about your mountain. You've got to talk to the Lord about your problem. And then when you know you've heard from God, see, you believe and you know that you've heard from God. You have no doubt now. You can't believe and know you heard from God and have doubt, see. Both of those go hand in hand. The no doubting comes from you praying and seeking and knowing that you've heard from God. Then you shall have whatsoever you say. You don't just have a problem and then flip through the Bible and find something and start quoting it over and over and over and over and over and over, you know, a hundred times till God feels guilty and backs it up and heals you or something. You've got to seek the scriptures and find out from God. Search his promises. If it's finances, search through for his promises to take care of us and everything. When he says in here, give to the poor, who's he talking to? He's talking to whoever read the scripture where he said he gives to the poor. And so if you're the one reading it, that means he, he's going to give you enough finances to take care of your needs and to give to the poor because he's telling you to. See? So reading the Bible is where you get so much of God's word in you to live by throughout the day. 
Now, when they lay hands on you, persecute you and everything, it says, Before all these, they shall lay hands on you, persecute you, delivering you, synagogues, prisons, being brought before kings and rulers. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. See, that's going to be a testimony for you to them, to the to the guards and everything. Like Peter, excuse me, not like Peter, like Paul and Silas, when they were down there singing praises at midnight, and the earthquake and everything, that turned to them as a testimony to the jailer, Don't kill yourself. He said, and the jailer said to him, what do I need to do to be saved? He said, let's go to your house and I'll tell you. And the jailer and his household were saved that night and everything. See, it turned to them as a testimony. But it says here, listen to this. For each of us now, me, you, and everybody, settle therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what you shall say. Don't just make up a, a signed statement in your heart that this is what I'm going to say. You know, He said, settle in your hearts not to meditate. Verse 50, for I give you a mouth and wisdom. So God is saying here that he will put his wisdom, his word in you to, to share with them the testimony, the whatever they need at that time. He'll put Christ in you. Christ in you will come forth from your heart and give you the wisdom, the words to share at that time. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. See, that's what we've got to learn from our daily walking like today, to learn to hear his voice, learn to share his word in a way that we know he'll back it up. So if somebody asks you to pray for them today, don't just say, I'll put you on my prayer list. Pray for them right then. And let God do the backing up. Trust him enough that he'll back up what you share. He'll back up Christ to them for whatever their need is and everything. And then in Revelation 12, 11, the scripture says, And they shall overcome him, speaking of the devil, by the blood of the Lamb. See, that's already been done for us. By the blood of the Lamb, Jesus, shedding his blood seven times on the cross, the sprinkling of Jesus' blood to fulfill those sacrificial requirements for health and for salvation. It says, And they overcame him, speaking of the devil, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And that's when these evil things happen at end time. It says they shall turn to you for a testimony. And you should share that testimony with others. And if you haven't received Christ in your heart today, to get ready, you need to turn to the Lord right now and say, Lord, please forgive me of my sins. Please come into my heart and save me. Put your spirit of Christ in me. And I commit my life to you. Ezekiel 36, 26. God promises a new heart also will give you. A new spirit will put within you. I'll take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I'll give you a heart of flesh. A new heart of flesh. A clean heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you. And when he puts his spirit in us, we're born into his family. We're born again by the spirit into his family. Like Galatians 4, 6 says, And because your son's God has sent forth the spirit of his son Christ into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore you no more a servant but a son, if a son, then heir of God through Christ. Let these things turn for a testimony in your life, but you've got to have God's word in you and a confidence to share and speak up as you go throughout the day. Good day, and God bless you. John 3, 16, 17. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him, Jesus, should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Now my revision is this for John 3.16. For God so loved the people of the world that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus, that Jesus should endure the loneliness, the suffering of the perfect walk of faith, and the painful sufferings of his seven sprinklings of his blood on the cross by the crown of thorns, the plucking of his beard, the nails in his two feet, the nails in his two hands, and the terrible stripes on his back, that Jesus would go through all this suffering. God allowed these sufferings in his mercy so that all of God's already pre-elected and predestined people prior to birth to die and go to heaven, that they would actually die and go to heaven. That sounds so ridiculous. If only predestined or elected people prior to their birth go to heaven, then there would have been no need for the work and suffering of Jesus. No one's destiny would or will ever be changed by Jesus' suffering and death on the cross for our sins and salvation. 
because everything required for our salvation would have already been done prior to our birth by God's act of electing and predestining us to heaven or hell before birth. After God has predestined us to heaven or hell, there would be no need or no more to be done in heaven and earth. It would already be finished before our birth. So what's happening here is the devil hates Jesus so much that he's come up with this Calvinist, devilish, deceived theology that would have us think that we're predestined or elected prior to birth to go to heaven or hell, and that would make all the suffering and work of Jesus as our Savior totally unnecessary, totally worthless, and Jesus totally useless. For his life and death on the cross would not change anything prior to, you know, people dying and going to heaven or hell. Because it has already been done by God predestining and electing them to heaven or hell before we were born. See how ridiculous that is? Good day. God bless you. God's Pure Word of Faith with Richard Harden can now be heard Monday through Friday mornings at 7 a.m. Central, 8 Eastern, and on Saturday and Sunday mornings at 6 a.m. Central, 7 Eastern. Join him and let's turn our country back to God. It only takes a spark to start a forest fire. Let's get on fire for the Lord, right here on KLRN Radio and the Spark Radio Network. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com.